Welcome back to The Big Build. I'm Robin Clever and in this video we're going to talk a little bit about insulating. This is a job which we have to take very, very seriously. When I started out as a carpenter, building loft conversions in South London back in the um, sort of late 80s, early 90s, it was just crash bang wallet, it was just loads of stud work, building the things up, packing it with a little bit of rock wall or insulation, you know, like the loft roll stuff, 100 mil thick maximum. There was no talk about ventilation, air spaces, or anything like that, or air tightness indeed. Now, completely different. And with the future of alternative energy, such as heat pumps and ground source, air source, solar, the fabric of a building needs to be super airtight and insulated. PIR is cut in by hand in between rafters and if the rafters have been put in and they're not that parallel, not that square, it's a really tricky job and people tend to just start adding bits and pieces and leaving lots of gaps everywhere. There's a new building reg that's come out now, or in fact in the new year I believe it's going to be mandatory, where we have to actually prove that the performance of the insulation works. And what that means is, in this scenario, where we've got bits of insulation with, with big gaps here, here, all of this sort of stuff, all of this sort of stuff, and then there's bits that are just held in with spikes and nails, big gaps there, obviously that's not going to comply, it's not going to work you're going to get a lot of cold spots and that sort of stuff. So we're here on the big build and we are going to start insulating the roof fabric of the building, which is huge. It's a massive area to insulate. And what we're not doing is very typical with loft conversions or roof conversions. You often see the detail being the architect will have some insulation in the floor. Then where you have what you have called a void wall, they'll have insulation running up there. Then in between the roof space, they'll have insulation running up there. And then at the ceiling level or the collar level, they'll have an insulation running there. And sometimes on the drawing, you'll have rock wall or quilt. You'll have quilt here. Then you'll go to a PIR and then you'll go back to a quilt. A varying thicknesses depending on the space and the regulations. Now, I don't like that because you've got all these junctions everywhere where you can have a bit of a gap or something like that and it just doesn't function very well unless you just go over the top and cram the quilt in and potentially block your ventilation or your airspace. So what we are doing is we're going to take our insulation from here, from the wall plate, it's going to go all the way between the rafters right the way up and it's going to hit the ridge. That is going to be one layer of PIR and that's going to be taped with gapo tape. Now the tape takes out any gap, which is called the performance gap. That comes from trying to cut in between sawn timbers that have been all spaced out. And no matter how well you try, you get a little bit of a bow or a cup. You'll measure it here, you'll try and fit it there, and it may not fit. The gapo tape allows tolerance of around about eight to 10 millimeters. So you cut all your panels eight to 10 millimeters smaller you wrap the edge of the PIR with the gaffer tape, you push it in, it's a super friction fit, it's squashed between the rafters, there's no air getting through that. So, what we're going to do, as I say, is we're going to start at the plate and finish at the ridge. We're going to go all the way through a continuous detail. We're going to have no mixing of different types of insulation. Then underneath, we're going to go all the way over with another skin of PIR, and that one we'll use a foil tape on and that acts as two things. It's another vapor barrier, and it's also another layer of air tightness as well. So that is the way I like to do it, to maintain the airflow that comes above the insulation, which makes this a cold roof, from eaves to ridge, over the top of the ridge, back down to the other side. You'll see here, this is a high fascia detail. This is a vented strip here which allows the ventilation it's amazing i can feel that air coming through there this is also a breather membrane but a breather membrane isn't always enough ventilation and you should always check by whoever's doing the specification of the building exactly what you need so we've got a breather membrane and we've got the ventilation coming in at the eaves and going out of the ridge with a vented ridge tile as well so 
We're going to go downstairs and make ourselves a table because we have got 60 something sheets of one type of material and each one's got to be cut, taped and fixed. Now, the majority of our rafter spacings in this roof, in the big build, have been designed that we do not get any waste from the PIR. How did we do that? Well, people seem to think you've got to be at 400 centers or 600 centers. Now, we are at 450 centers, okay? And that means that we've worked this out. I specified that to our timber engineer. We could have been at 600 centers. I don't personally like that. I like 400 or 450 because you've got less grounds to put in for plasterboard. At 600 centers, it starts getting a bit floppy without going up to say 15 millimeter plasterboard, which is heavy and sometimes harder to get hold of. What we've got here is we've got a 450 mil center everywhere, apart from where you get something like a double, obviously it's gonna be reduced. But what that means is, I just put two cuts through a sheet of PIR, and so I end up with three equal pieces. Now, so because some of the timbers come up 46 or 47 mil, the gap in between, even at 450 centers, is gonna be 403 millimeters. Now, I can't get three times 403 from a sheet which only measures 1200. But once I put my cuts through, I get exactly what I need to allow for the gapo tape. So I've got two straight cuts and that's it. I'm ready, I tape it and I push it in and it fits. So we're gonna go down and make a table. trade as far as I'm concerned with PIR, I use the Festool ISC240. This is a great tool once you've got the hang of it. It's like a big jigsaw, but it's got a very stiff riving knife on the bottom, which enables that blade to stay nice and straight and fairly square. Then what we've got is we can use it with the rail. So where we're doing our big rips, we pull our sheets from the, from the stock there we pop them into this frame that we made, into the cutting table that we made. We use the long rail, and for most of the insulation here, they're all exactly the same size, and I'm getting three rips from a board. We drop the board in, we put our long rail against these two nails here, like that, and then we hook the saw into that part of the rail, and it cuts all the way through there and gives us our cuts. Now that's fine for straightforward rips, and if we've got any tapered rips, well then we just mark them, use the rail, and cut through them. But we've got a lot of angled cuts, for example, on the ridge, the wall plate, and the valley. So these two pieces here are gonna go from the valley to the ridge, and in between rafters. So we've got a compound cut on the bottom, which is where it fits against the valley, like this and then we've got the ridge at the top. So, we made a box here, a simple box here, which is effectively a pair of rafters, and this is the splay cut, which is the compound cut. And what happens is we slide our PIR in using the saw. We've got a small channel, a small timber, which this hooks onto here vacuum attached and then we run it straight the way through and it gives us a perfect compound cut the same every time we use a vacuum extractor on that so we don't get it all in the atmosphere and in our lungs and the reverse will give me this cut and what I tend to do on a valley is cut my strips my 450 strips if you like and then I just cut straight through the middles I'll use one here and I'll use one there and then I'll finish it with a straight piece. So here we have a mountain of PR 
And what I was talking a little bit about was the fact that all we need to do is divide our sheets exactly by three, okay? And that will give us the exact pieces we need. Normally, if you're at 400 centers, you do say a 350, a 350, a 350, and you end up with this piece here, right? And that long skinny piece there, if you can't put it in somewhere, it generally gets discarded. And I don't like that because that is, you know, you add that up across all of this and it's sheets and sheets of material. This stuff isn't cheap and it's hard to get rid of. Probably not that good for the environment when it goes to landfill or whatever. So, by doing the way we do it, by specifying the roof spaces to suit our material, we end up with a really, really good cost-effective way of going about it and also there's less waste to get rid of and even at 600 centers you'd be cutting at say 550 and 1100 so 550 550 you still end up with this bit here and I know people cut them up and ladder them up and put them all together but what you get in there is you're stacking them together you're getting those air spaces you're getting all of that and it's just not right So we're well into putting the PIR between the rafters, using the Gapo tape. This is a product I really do like because of the fact that it eliminates all the air gap, uh, if you like, the performance gap, which is what makes a lot of insulation fail because people tend not to cut them properly at the bottoms or the tops. They don't join them well here and they're not parallel, whereas this tape, obviously, with the memory foam on the side, gives you a really nice compression fit and eliminates any air that's likely to get through. We also cut them on the wall plate and cut them at the ridge. And we're doing our roof from wall plate to ridge and back down again. And we're gonna be doing that everywhere. So this is obviously a very small room. This is a little shower room. But in the main room here, you can see, again, we're going from wall plate all the way up to ridge which gives us a really nice envelope. And we're also then gonna put the second skin, the one that goes underneath, all the way from ridge, all the way to wall plate as well. And that'll catch the end of that wooden beam there. And everything's really nice and insulated. So we know that there's no break, there's no change. Instead of having a dwarf wall here, which we will have, some people will insulate between the floor. They'll come through here, they'll come up the dwarf wall, then they'll start their PIR and they'll go up to a ceiling and then they'll insulate across, which is actually more difficult and more fiddly because once you're set up like this and you're going from ridge to plate or plate to ridge, whatever you want to say, it's a much nicer job. Then what we'll do is we'll put our ceiling in afterwards. We'll put our dwarf wall in afterwards. So there's no break. There's no insulation trying to cut around timbers and all that sort of stuff. And where we've got a valley here, we also create a perfect compound cut in the valleys here. Come around this way, you can see what I mean on both sides. And that also gives you a really nice finish. So we've actually got all the insulation finished, ready for, we have a small dwarf wall, which is running at around about 900 millimeters here. And we also have our ceiling, which runs across from the bottom of our lattice ridge level out here. Now, quite a lot when you build a roof, you put a pair of rafters up and then you may incorporate a collar, which will be bolted or fixed to the sides of the rafters, sailing through to form your ceiling. And equally, you might do that with your low void wall. It might come up and attach on the sides of the rafters. Now, the trouble with that is it doesn't suit a very energy efficient building trying to cut your insulation around all those junctions is particularly difficult. Um, you just don't get enough time on the job to do such a perfect job. Now, the way I've designed this is we've got all of our insulation between the rafters with the gapo tape, so it's an absolutely perfect fit. We've cut them all perfectly into the valleys, compound cuts. We've taken them right into the ridges on a splayed cut, 
and right over the wall plate in between the rafters. So we go between the rafters from ridge all the way down to plate and then once we've got that on we put another skin in as well and this skin goes all the way down again from the wall plate at the bottom and it travels all the way up to the lattice ridge at the top. Now what this simply does is it's another vapour barrier because it's basically end to end, top to bottom, tape joints and this also helps with cold bridging is something they talk about where cold may pass through a solid piece of timber like a rafter and make contact with your wall board or ceiling board. So that's basically the shell of the roof insulated. I'm also now monitoring the temperature in the building. I've got a small device, um, I'm just going to pick it up, I don't want to heat it up with my hands too much. This is called a sensor push and what it's basically doing is collecting data and it collects this data on an ongoing basis and then as soon as I walk by or get near the building my Bluetooth picks it up and it downloads the data to my phone then I can take it off and look at exactly how it's performing. Now we haven't got our bifolds in yet on site so we've still got a large opening but what we have got is a really well insulated roof space which collects heat that we generate while we're working and it also um, you know it just with the ambient sun coming through you get a little bit of solar gain and I've been able to look at this and see what the drops are now that's really useful to me because as soon as we've filled in those openings we put the bifolds in and the back door then I'll have a shell which is fairly airtight there'll be very few spots where the air's coming in and even without heating I'll be able to see what the drop is from night to day and day to night etc and just start measuring that because regardless of there being any heating here I can still measure just how efficient this building is. Now that's the installation done I hope you enjoyed this video um, Ed and I have painstakingly insulated this you've seen us how we've cut everything just how perfect everything is and it's just all a dream to do and I just think that if you're going to be building self-building or building for someone else I just think this is really what we've got to aim for in the future for an energy efficient building. Thank you.